Want to speak real Portuguese from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at portuguesepod101.com. Bom dia, gente, tudo bom? Paloma here. Welcome to Talk Portuguese Words. Today's topic is how to respond to how are you? Tudo bem? How are you? Tudo bem? How are you? I think you already know that tudo bem can be the question and also the answer. Tudo bem? Tudo bem. Oi, tudo bem? Tudo bem, e você? E aí, beleza? Hey, what's up? E aí, beleza? Hey, what's up? Beleza means beauty, but in this case I think it means more like everything's beautiful with you. You can also answer beleza. This is very casual, so it's best to avoid it in a more formal or business situation. E você? And you? E você? And you? Of course, if someone asks you, e aí, beleza, or tudo bem, it's common courtesy to also ask them, e você, and you? Tudo ótimo, everything is great. Tudo ótimo, everything is great. If you don't want to answer the same way as the question, tudo bem, tudo bem, you can also say, tudo ótimo, everything is great. Eu estou bem, I'm fine. Eu estou bem, I'm fine. That's another option. Bem means well in Portuguese or fine. Eu estou bem. Eu estou bem também. I'm fine too. Eu estou bem também. I'm fine too. So if you say, eu estou bem, e você? The person can answer, eu estou bem também. I'm also fine. Então tá bom. Then it's all good. It's very common to say after all these steps, então tá bom. Then it's all good. Oi, tudo bom? Tudo bem, e você? Tudo bem. Ah, então tá bom. Eu estou me sentindo mal. I'm feeling bad. Tudo bem? Não, estou me sentindo mal. No, I'm feeling bad. Maybe I ate something that wasn't good. Eu estou ótima. I'm great. Oi, tudo bom? Como você tá? How are you? Eu estou ótima. I'm great. Obrigada por perguntar. Thank you for asking. If you want to be very polite, you can say Obrigado por perguntar or Obrigado por perguntar. Thank you for asking. The end. That's it for today. Tudo bem com você? How are you? Let us know in the comments below. See you next time. Bye bye. Hi. Welcome to Introduction to Portuguese. My name is Alicia and I'm joined by Hi everyone, I'm Anna. In this lesson, we'll focus on teaching you the most useful Portuguese words and phrases for absolute beginners. Make sure you are repeating the words out loud after I say the examples. Are you ready? Let's get started. The best phrase to learn when studying a new language is one that expresses gratitude and appreciation. If you had to learn only a single phrase, this would be it. We taught you this word in the first lesson of the series. Do you remember what it was? Obrigado. Obrigada. It means thank you. Say obrigado if you're a male or obrigada if you're a female. Obrigado. Obrigada. Keep repeating after Ana until you get it. Obrigado. Obrigada. Your turn. Obrigado, obrigada. Obrigado, obrigada. Do you remember how we talked about pronunciation of the letter R here in lesson two? Don't pronounce it like an English R. Don't roll your tongue. Listen to how Anna is pronouncing this sound. Ri. Think of the quick tapping motion your tongue makes as it strikes the top gum ridge in words like ladder or butter. Ri. Ri. Altogether, it's... Obrigado. Obrigada. Okay, one last time. Obrigado. Obrigada. Okay, the next phrase we'll teach you is perhaps the second most useful phrase of all. It's to excuse yourself. Com licença. It means excuse me. Com licença. 
Use this phrase when you want to grab someone's attention or when you brush by someone in the streets. Com licença. If you recall, we talked about nasal vowels in lesson two, too. Like this one. N. To pronounce it, you need to lower your soft palate and the back of your tongue, unblocking the nasal passage and allowing air to pass through the nasal cavity and out through the nose. Imagine you're humming with your mouth open and add the E vowel sound to it. N. Now you try. N. Again. N. Altogether, it's... Com licença. On a daily basis, Brazilians tend to drop the first word, saying simply... Com licença. And what about showing forgiveness? This is very important in any country. In Brazilian Portuguese, the most common way to say, I'm sorry, is... Me desculpe. On a daily basis, People often drop the pronoun me, saying just desculpe. But it can also be said me desculpa or simply desculpa. Both ways are correct. Note that this variation is due to conjugation aspects and it's not gender related. You can say both ways regardless of your gender. Let's listen. Me desculpe. Desculpa. It's very useful when you bump into someone when taking the busy subway lines of Sao Paulo. Let's practice a little. Me desculpe. Now you try. Me desculpe. Now let's try the variation. Desculpa. Desculpa. One last time. Desculpa. Great! Now you can say, thank you, excuse me, and I'm sorry in Portuguese. Let's move on. Asking where something is is an incredibly important and useful phrase to learn. You're going to need this when asking where the bathroom, the subway station, the bus stop, or where the hotel is. To ask where something is, you should say, onde fica? Then you should verify the gender of the location you want to know about, so you can place the proper article, feminine, a, or masculine, o. Onde fica a, o? Lastly, add the location. If you want to know where the bathroom is, you should say, onde fica o banheiro? The word for bathroom in Portuguese is a masculine gender. So, like Anna said, we put the definite masculine article O before the noun. Onde fica o banheiro? For the subway station, it'll be... Onde fica o metrô? And so on. Just remember the gender to use the correct article. Let's see some vocabulary that you can use in this sentence. Here are some of the most common words you'll need to learn. Banheiro. Bathroom. Banheiro. Onde fica o banheiro? Next. Metrô. Subway. Metrô. Onde fica o metrô? If you ask this question, they'll direct you to the closest subway station. If you'd like to ask where a specific station is, simply place the name of the station after subway. Onde fica o metrô Consolação? Or you can just say station instead of subway. Onde fica a estação Consolação? Next. Hotel. Hotel. See that in Portuguese, H as the first letter is always silent, except for specific foreign loanwords. Hotel. Onde fica o hotel? For a specific hotel, do the same as before. Just place the name after hotel. Hotel. Hotel Intercontinental. Onde fica o hotel intercontinental? Next. Padaria. Bakery. Bakeries, especially in São Paulo, are really popular. There are a lot of bakeries in the city, and they usually are a blend of a bakery, a deli, a coffee shop, a restaurant, and a pizza parlor, all in one place. Often, even a mini market as well and sometimes acting as a bar at night. There are enormous franchise bakeries as well as smaller family ones. 
So knowing this is extremely useful, especially in Sao Paulo. Okay, so how do we ask where the bakery is? Onde fica a padaria? You can substitute almost anything and simply add Onde fica o a to ask where something is in Portuguese. In this final lesson, you learned how to say thank you, excuse me, I'm sorry, and to ask where something is in Portuguese. And in this series, we introduced you to the basics of Portuguese pronunciation, grammar, writing, and more. Let's conclude with some parting advice from Ana and listen to some of her tips on how to learn Portuguese from a native Brazilian perspective. The best way to learn Portuguese, particularly if you want to improve your communication skills, is to watch and study contemporary Brazilian videos, like soap operas and news programs. That way you can learn expressions and the peculiarities of pronunciation that you can't learn from regular grammar books and methods. A great way to learn, which is also pleasant, is studying with MPB, Brazilian Popular Music. Brazil is famous for its unique type of music, and the lyrics usually mix formal and informal Portuguese in a rich and poetic way. You can increase your vocabulary while enjoying good music and learning more about the country's culture and history. A big mistake I see learners make is not asking native speakers for help with the language. Brazilians are in general very warm and receptive, and they want to be polite, so they won't correct your grammar or pronunciation. They're usually flattered and happy to see the effort in Portuguese, so they reciprocate with doing their best to understand foreigners and not paying attention to their mistakes. Because of that, a lot of learners end up plateauing in their Portuguese by getting too comfortable. Don't do that. Ask your Brazilian friends and colleagues to help and correct you. Tell them it will not offend you. On the contrary, it will make you very happy. If you are not in Brazil, a tip is to browse the web for Brazilians who are willing to be your friends. It shouldn't be difficult. Practice your pronunciation a lot and try your best to remember noun genders. Make a list if you need. It's very common for learners to mix the genders up, as there is no exact rule to determine when a noun is masculine or feminine. Watching contemporary videos, such as our videos here at Portuguese Pod 101, we will ensure that you are learning real, applicable Portuguese in the fastest and most effective way. You've reached the end of this course, Introduction to Portuguese, but it's only the beginning of your journey to Portuguese fluency. Where do you go from here? Try our Portuguese in 3 Minutes series, where we teach you beginner vocabulary and even more useful phrases. Or check out any of our other video series. We have many different categories for you to choose from. Good luck as you continue learning Portuguese, and I'll see you in another video. Bye! Bye! E aí, galera, beleza? Hello, my dear. Welcome to another Talk Portuguese Words. Today's topic is 20 travel phrases you should know. Travel, viajar. Você pode me ver o mapa? Could you get me a map? Você pode me ver o mapa? Could you get me a map? Well, nowadays everyone has cell phone and we have maps on it, so it's not that useful anymore. But sometimes in some smaller cities, it's very useful to have a map. So just remember that word, mapa, is not the hard, right? Você fala inglês? Do you speak English? Você fala inglês? Do you speak English? Well, this is kind of a survival phrase, especially if you don't speak Portuguese very well. You should know that one. So you can, you know, just approach everyone and just ask them, Você fala inglês? Você fala inglês? Well, if you speak another language, you can also ask, just change English for that language, right? Você fala inglês? Você fala francês? Você fala japonês? And hopefully someone will speak the language you need. Tem algum ônibus que vai do aeroporto até a cidade? Is there a bus from the airport to the city? Tem algum ônibus que vai do aeroporto até a cidade? Is there a bus from the airport to the city? 
In most airports, there will probably be a bus that goes from the airport to the city. So just ask information or guardinha, like a security guard. Yeah, we love to ask the guardinhas. Moço, excuse me, sir. Moço, com licença. Wi-Fi é gratuito? Is the Wi-Fi free? O Wi-Fi é gratuito? Is the Wi-Fi free? You can also say Wi-Fi é grátis. In most restaurants, hotels, and everywhere you go, they will have a Wi-Fi. So sometimes the Wi-Fi is free, but they still have a password. So you can ask, qual é a senha do Wi-Fi? What is the Wi-Fi password? Você tem um quarto vago para hoje? Do you have any vacancies tonight? Você tem um quarto vago para hoje? Do you have any vacancies tonight? I prefer to book for a room before going to the city, but many people prefer to just go to the place they want to go and there they find the hotel. Well, if you do that, then you have to ask Tem algum quarto para hoje à noite? Or tem algum quarto vago para hoje à noite? Eu poderia me mudar para outro quarto? Could I move to a different room? Eu poderia me mudar para outro quarto? Could I move to a different room? Well, there are many reasons why you want to change your room. Maybe it's too noisy, barulhento, or something's broken, quebrado. So you can just go complain, this is broken, or it's too noisy, posso me mudar para outro quarto? Eu tenho uma reserva. I have a reservation. Eu tenho uma reserva. I have a reservation. Well, you can use this at hotels or restaurants. If you want to be more specific, you can say Eu tenho uma reserva no nome de... I have a reservation under the name of... Eu tenho uma reserva no nome de Paloma. Você pode trazer o cardápio, por favor? Could you bring the menu, please? Você pode trazer o cardápio, por favor? Could you bring the menu, please? Okay, this is very useful because many countries, they also use the word menu, similar to the English, but in Brazil, we mostly use the word cardápio. So don't forget it. If you say menu, they probably understand, but it's much more common to say cardápio. Você tem alguma sugestão? Do you have any recommendations? Você tem alguma sugestão? Do you have any recommendations? So you can ask that to the waiter, the waitress, or maybe the tour guide. You can also say like, I like meat. Do you have any recommendations? Eu gosto de carne. Você tem alguma sugestão? Você pode trazer a conta? Could I have the check? Você pode trazer a conta? Can I have the check? So, você pode trazer a conta literally means, can you bring me the bill? But, well, in English, it's more common to say, can I have the check, maybe? You can also say just, a conta, por favor, the check, please. Eu sou alérgico a amendoim. I'm allergic to peanuts. Eu sou alérgico a amendoim. I'm allergic to peanuts. I'm so lucky I'm not allergic to anything, so I can just order whatever I want. Maybe I won't like it, but at least it won't be bad for me. If you're allergic to something, make sure to know that word in Portuguese. If you don't know that word, you can just post in the comments below and we'll make sure to answer you. Uma água, por favor. Water, please. Uma água, por favor. Water, please. Usually when you order water in Brazil, they come in bottles, they don't come in glasses. And they are usually água mineral, not água com gas, which would be sparkling water. So if you just want normal, natural water, you can just say água mineral. Quanto custa este daqui? How much is this? Quanto custa este daqui? How much is this? So if you're in store looking at things, you can just say, oh, I like that one. Quanto custa este daqui? How much is this? Eu quero 10 desses. I'd like 10 of this. Eu quero 10 desses. I'd like 10 of this. So if you went to the store and you asked, Quanto custa este daqui? And you liked it? You can just say, Eu vou levar 10 desses. I'm gonna take 10 of this. Eu quero este daqui. I'd like this one. 
Eu quero este daqui. I'd like this one. If you want to be very specific, you can say Eu quero este daqui. I'd like this one. If you want that one, you would say Eu quero aquele dali. Tem desconto? Is there a discount? Tem desconto? Is there a discount? So it's very common to ask for discounts in Brazil. Uh, you can also say Tem desconto no dinheiro? Is there a discount in cash? Especially if you're buying a lot of merchandise, you can ask that. Of course, you're not gonna ask in a supermarket or a chain store, but if it's like a local business, it's more common to give a discount. Maybe in touristic areas, not that common, but well, you should try, right? As we say in Brazil, não custa nada. Doesn't cost anything. At the most, your answer is gonna be no, no, não tem desconto. Vocês aceitam cartão de crédito? Do you take credit card? Vocês aceitam cartão de crédito? Do you take credit card? Nowadays you can pay by credit card everywhere. Uh, it's very very hard to find a place that doesn't accept credit card. Like it's crazy even if you go for example to the beach, there's like the guy selling earrings and he's gonna have his credit card machine so you can pay with credit card. I'm not kidding. Yeah. Onde fica a rodoviária? Where's the bus terminal? Onde fica a rodoviária? Where's the bus terminal? You can say rodoviária or terminal rodoviário, but it's much more common just to say rodoviária. Quanto é a passagem? What's the fare? Quanto é a passagem? What's the fare? You can use the question at the rodoviária, the bus terminal, for example, for a long distance bus, but you can also use it for a local bus. For example, if you don't see the price that is usually in the front of the bus, you can just ask the driver, motorista, or cobrador. Você poderia parar em? Or você poderia me avisar? But first, you have to ask. Quanto é a passagem? Quanto é a tarifa? Você pode tirar uma foto de mim, por favor? Could you take a picture of me, please? Você pode tirar uma foto de mim, por favor? Can you take a picture of me, please? Most people nowadays don't leave their home without their selfie stick, which in Portuguese is pau de selfie. Um, but if you don't have your pau de selfie, you can just ask someone. Você pode tirar uma foto de mim, por favor? Or, você pode tirar uma foto de nós, por favor? Can you take our picture, please? Yeah, I'm talking with my ghost friend here. The end! That's all for today. Thanks a lot for listening. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, let us know which other words or sentences you need to know before traveling to Brazil. See you next time. Ciao, ciao. Want to speak real Portuguese from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at portuguesepod101.com. You are at a bus terminal where you're heading to the police office to retrieve a lost passport. According to a postcard you received from the police office, what are the things that you need to provide to the police? What are the things that you need to provide to the police? The postcard says that you need to pay a small fee. Pagar uma pequena taxa. E aí, gente, beleza? Paloma here. Welcome to another Top Portuguese Words. Today's topic is. Tem must know math words. 
Ooh, matemática, math. Did you like matemática when you were kids or now when you're study? Let us know. Dúzia, dozen. Dúzia, dozen. Eu comprei uma dúzia de banana na feira ontem. I bought a dozen banana at the farmer's market yesterday. It's very common to use dúzia or dozen in Brazil, especially at the feira, the farmer's market, which happens like every day of the week, usually in the morning, in a certain place of each city. For example, bananas we buy by the dozen. What else? Especially bananas, I don't know why. Número, number. Número, number. Para ser engenheiro, você precisa gostar de números. To be an engineer, you need to like numbers. Well, that's true. I like numbers, but not that much to become an engineer, so... Well, I just like math, but not, you know, they've calculating all day. <laughs> you can also say número to ask someone else's phone. Você pode me passar o seu número? Can you give me your number or can you give me your phone number? Metade, half. Metade, half. Está tudo pela metade do preço. Everything is half the price. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that's like a girl's dream to go to a store e tudo estar pela metade do preço. Everything is half the price. Por cento, percent. Por cento. Percent. Essa calça tem 30% de desconto. These pants are 30% off. This is how we say percent off in Portuguese. The number 30% de desconto of discount. Par. Even. Par. Even. Os números pares são 2, 4, 6, 8. The even numbers are 2, 4, 6, 8. Par also means pair. So, a pair of shoes, um par de sapatos. But it means even. Número par, even number. Ímpar, odd. Ímpar, odd. Os números ímpares são 1, 3, 5, 7. The odd numbers are 1, 3, 5, 7. So when you're trying to decide something, you can play para o ímpar, which in English is odd or even. Para o ímpar. There is also a po, but it's like from Japanese origin. Mais, plus. Mais, plus. Sete mais cinco é igual a doze. Seven plus five equals twelve. Well, as I'm sure you know, mais also means more. So you can say, eu quero mais, I want more. Um mais um é dois. One plus one is two. O sinal de mais, the plus sign. Menos, minus. Menos, minus. Nós usamos o sinal de menos para fazer uma subtração. We use the minus sign to do subtraction. You know that phrase, more is less? In Portuguese, that would be mais é menos. So, menos also means less, and mais, more, don't forget it. Vezes, times. Vezes, times. Duas vezes é a mesma coisa que o dobro. Two times is the same as double. Especially if you just start learning Portuguese, sometimes it can be hard to remember those words. Dobro, triplo, quadruplo, quintuplo. So, you can just say... Duas vezes, três vezes, quatro vezes, which is much easier to remember. Dividir, to divide. Dividir, to divide. Preciso dividir essa torta em dez pedaços. I need to divide this tart in ten pieces. Dividir can also mean share, so you can say, Eu vou dividir o meu lanche com você. I can share my, my snack with you. Or dividir, to divide. Dividir um pedaço de pão, to divide a piece of bread, a loaf of bread. Okay, that's all for today. Thanks a lot for listening. Don't forget to let us know in the comments below which were your favorite subjects at school. See you next time. Até a próxima. Tchau! You've decided to study a new language. 
So now what? Well, you want to become fluent fast, right? Here are the top five shortcuts to learning a language. Number one, create a study schedule and set some goals. Many language learners are unorganized. Creating a schedule allows you to free up time to study consistently. Goals give you motivation and something to strive for. Number two, make it fun. If you learn how to make your study time enjoyable, chances are you'll be more inclined to study. Watch a TV show with subtitles or listen to some music. Number three, find a language partner. This is the best way to improve your conversation skills. It will help you gain fluency even faster and increase confidence when speaking. Number four, use word lists to build up a solid vocabulary. This is a great way to build up your fluency, one word at a time. Luckily, we have all the word lists you need with a range of topics from food to love. Choose whichever language you want to study and go. Number five, don't be afraid to make mistakes. Nothing helps you improve more than correcting your own errors. You're more likely to remember it correctly the next time around. Everyone makes mistakes. Don't be afraid to learn from them. There's no magical way to learn a new language overnight, but doing all of these can really help your learning process. And remember, if you're interested in getting on the fast track to fluency, sign up for your free lifetime account, no credit card required, and you'll get the best free online resources. Start learning now. Boa tarde, galera, tudo bom? Paloma here. Welcome to another Top Portuguese Words. Today's theme is Top 10 Must Know Vocabulary for the Restaurant. Mm. Um, garçom, waiter. Garçom, waiter. Queria fazer o pedido, mas o garçom tá demorando tanto. I'd like to order, but the waiter is taking so long to serve us. If it is a female, that would be garçonete. You can also use the words moço or moça to call their attentions. For example, o moço or garçom. Both are okay. Cardápio. Menu. Cardápio. Menu. Por favor, você pode me trazer o cardápio? Can you bring me the menu, please? You can say before that, moço. Garçom, você pode trazer o cardápio, por favor? Prato feito, PF. Set meal. Hum, o que, que eu como hoje? Acho que vou pedir um PF que sai mais barato. Hum, what should I eat today? I think I'll order a set meal, since it's cheaper. Prato feito or set meal is very common in Brazil, especially, for example, in the restaurants near business or schools which is like a set plate, so you can just eat quickly and go to your work or school. But it's used at restaurants. For example, if you go to McDonald's, we don't order a PF or prato feito. It's usually called combo. Pratos feitos usually have like rice, beans, kind of protein, usually beef, and a salad. It's all good, um PF. Bem passado, well done. Bem passado, well done. Gostaria da carne bem passada, por favor. I'd like the steak well done, please. Well, the opposite of bem passada would be mal passada. So if you want it rare, you would say mal passada, por favor. Acompanhamentos, side dishes. Acompanhamentos. Side dishes. Nossa, tem tanta opção de acompanhamentos que eu nem sei o que pedir. Well, there are so many side dishes options that I can't decide what to order. What is your favorite side dish? I like puré de batata, mashed potatoes, mm, what else? Batata frita, of course, french fries, arroz grega, which is like a Greek rice, which is a rice with a lot of vegetables. Yeah, it's also very good. Água. Water. Água. Water. Pode me trazer uma água com gás, por favor? Could you bring me a sparkling water, please? 
Okay, so just remember that if you say just agua, they'll probably bring you normal water. And if you say agua con gas, that would be sparkling water. Por kilo, by kilo. Por kilo, by kilo. Como eu como pouco, eu prefiro ir no restaurante por quilo. Since I don't eat much, I prefer to go to a per kilo restaurant. So per kilo restaurants are very common in Brazil. It's a kind of buffet and you just go and grab whatever you want to eat and then you're gonna weight your plate. And whatever is the weight is gonna be how much you pay for it. So if you eat a lot, usually it's not a good deal, but if you eat very little, it's usually a good deal because it's not gonna pay for a full set menu if you don't eat everything. So you can just grab whatever you want. For example, if you're on a diet and you are hanging out with your friends and you're just gonna eat some salad, it's very good because you don't need to order, you know, a whole piece of meat and don't eat it. You can just grab your salad and weigh it and eat it. Restaurant por kilo. Another option would be restaurant self-service which you pay a price and then you can just eat as much as you want at the buffet. Restaurante, restaurant. Restaurante, restaurant. Conheça um restaurante de comida italiana ótimo por aqui. Você vai adorar. I know a great Italian restaurant around here. You love it. So we have restaurantes, which are restaurants. We also have lanchonete, which are like a snack restaurant. Um, and then we have like specific places, pizzeria, pizza restaurant, um, pastelaria, a restaurant that only serves pastel, churrascaria, mm -hmm, which only serves churrasco or Brazilian barbecue. Delicioso, delicious. Delicioso, delicious. Esse pudim tá delicioso. Acho que vou pedir mais um pedaço. This pudding is delicious. I think I'll order another one. Mmm, tá delicioso. Or can also say, tá maravilhoso. It's marvelous. Conta. Bill. Conta. Bill. Pode trazer a conta, por favor? Can I have the bill, please? Or can you bring me the bill, please? Bill can be used at the restaurant bill, but you can also use it for other types of bills. For example, conta de luz, the electricity bill, conta de água, the water bill, conta de gas, maybe, gas bill. There are so many contas, so many bills. <laughs> okay, that's all for today. Thanks a lot for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And let us know in the comments what is your favorite type of Brazilian restaurants. And don't forget to subscribe to portuguesepod101.com and also to our YouTube channel. See you next time. Ciao, ciao. Want to speak real Portuguese from your first lesson? Sign up for your free lifetime account at portuguesepod101.com. Hi, everyone. I'm Paloma from portuguesepod101.com. Do you know how to say I love you in Portuguese? In this lesson, you learn three different ways to say I love you and all about Valentine's Day in Brazil. Let's start with the most common phrase. Eu te amo. Eu te amo. I love you. This phrase is direct. You should only use it when you're confessing your love. If you want to be less direct, you can use this phrase. Eu te adoro. Eu te adoro. It literally means I adore you, but it's how we express we like someone a lot. What if you want to be more romantic in expressing your love for someone? Here's the phrase for you. Palavras não podem descrever o meu amor por você. Palavras não podem descrever o meu amor por você. It means words cannot describe my love for you. Now you know three different ways to say I love you in Portuguese. And here's another phrase to learn. In Brazil, Valentine's Day is celebrated on the 12th of June and it's called Dia dos Namorados. Dia dos Namorados. It means Lover's Day.
Okay, let's wrap up this lesson by recapping what we've learned. Listen to the expression and repeat after me. I love you. Eu te amo. Eu te amo. I adore you. I like you a lot. Eu te adoro. Eu te adoro. Words cannot describe my love for you. Palavras não podem descrever o meu amor por você. Palavras não podem descrever o meu amor por você. Lover's Day Dia dos namorados Dia dos namorados Well done! Here's a fun fact! Did you know that Dia dos Namorados is not only for lovers? Not only couples. Singles also enjoy this day, as the nightclubs and theaters open special events for the singles looking for love. You just learned three different ways to say I love you in Portuguese and about Valentine's Day in Brazil. Also, don't forget to download your free cheat sheet on how to be a good lover in Brazil, including words for romance, compliments and pickup lines. Check out the description below and go to portuguesepod101.com now. I'll see you next time. Ciao! Hoje é dia dos namorados. Com você. Hoje é dia dos namorados. Você You have never been a DJ, so... <laughs> e aí, gente, tudo bom? Paloma here. Welcome to another Top Portuguese Words. Today's topic is... Top 10 phrases tourists should never use. Que nojo! Disgusting! Que nojo! Disgusting! Nojo means disgust, and nojento is the adjective, disgusting. So you can say que nojo or que nojento. O meu país é muito melhor do que o seu. My country is much better than yours. O meu país é muito melhor que o seu. My country is much better than yours. No, instead of saying that, you should always say eu amo o seu país. I love your country. Eu preferia estar na minha casa. I'd rather be back home. Eu preferia estar na minha casa. I'd rather be back home. Well, if you're saying that, maybe it's just better to stay at home. <laughs> Instead of this sentence, you should say, Eu não quero mais voltar para casa. I don't want to go home anymore. Cala a boca. Shut up. Cala a boca. Shut up. Cala a boca. Actually, you shouldn't use this sentence in your country or in another country or anywhere. Instead, you can say, Eu acho português muito bonito. I think Portuguese is very beautiful. Eu não estou muito interessado na sua cultura. I'm not very interested in your culture. Eu não estou muito interessado na sua cultura. I'm not very interested in your culture. Eu não estou muito interessado na sua cultura. Instead, you can say, A sua cultura é fascinante. Your culture is fascinating. Não gosto de conhecer gente nova. I don't like meeting new people. Não gosto de conhecer gente nova. I don't like meeting new people. Não gosto de conhecer gente nova. No, instead of the sentence, say Eu adoro fazer novas amizades. I love to make new friendships. 
Vamos comer no McDonald's mesmo. Let's just eat at McDonald's. Vamos comer no McDonald's mesmo. Let's just eat at McDonald's. That is so sad to go to another country and have so many flavorful foods to try and just eat McDonald's. Instead, it should say, what is the typical food in here? Qual é a comida típica daqui? Qual é a comida típica daqui? Isso é horrível. This is awful. Isso é horrível. This is awful. To make the sentence positive, you can say, Isso é maravilhoso. This is wonderful. Isso é maravilhoso. Que tonto. How stupid. Que tonto. How stupid. Que tonto. You can be more polite and just say, Que diferente. That's different. Vocês não são civilizados. You people are uncivilized. Vocês não são civilizados. You people are uncivilized. Well, that's like the worst thing you can say to anyone, right? Okay, that's all for today. Thanks a lot for watching and let us know in the comments what other phrases you think we shouldn't use while in a foreign country. Até mais! Até a próxima! Tchau! Hi everyone, welcome to your monthly review, the monthly show on language learning, where you discover new learning strategies, motivational tips, new study tools, resources, and where we show off learners like you speaking the language. That is, if you're brave enough to become language learning famous. All the materials mentioned in this video are available for you now on our website. Click the link in the description to sign up for your free lifetime account and start speaking in minutes. Okay, today's topic is the 10 habits of highly effective language learners. So, what do successful language learners, people who set language goals and actually hit them, do differently? And are you doing any of these things already? Let's get into it. You'll discover 10 powerful habits and how to apply them. I'll give you specific step-by-step -step examples. You can use these whether you're learning with our program or any other resource, a textbook, an app, or some audio program. Let's start with the first and most important one. Habit number one, set small, measurable goals with deadlines. Why small goals? Well, say for example, you set big, vague goals, like I wanna be fluent someday, and maybe you buy a textbook, you read the first chapter, then you start wondering if you're getting any better. You start worrying you'll never be fluent, and you give up. If you do this, you need to start setting small, measurable goals. For example, learn 100 words in a month or speak one minute of conversation, or do 30 of our audio lessons in one month. Deadline, November 30th. Okay, habit number two, create a routine, because your routine is what will bring your goals to reality. This goes back to the first habit. Again, if you set a goal like doing 30 lessons in one month, you need to do one lesson a day and spend 15 minutes studying. Now you have a routine to stick to, one lesson a day, 15 minutes. Next, decide when and where you'll do it. Why? So you can make time. Make a mental note that this time is language time. And, this is important, say no to other things. Your language goals and dreams take first priority. Next, habit number three, don't cram. Instead of cramming or forcing yourself to learn for one or five hours, start small. Cramming may have worked for you with studying for tests, but language learning is a marathon, not a sprint. So if you do five hours now, you'll burn yourself out. You'll hate the learning, and that's not good. That's how you fail at your goals and dreams. But if you can do five to 15 minutes a day, every day, learning won't be overwhelming, and you'll be successful in the long run. So how do you create this habit? If you've set your small, measurable goal and routine, you're good to go. Habit number four, prepare lines and conversations ahead of time. If you're like most language learners, speaking is your weak point. And a lot of the time, it's because you just don't know what to say. You don't have the words in your head. This is where preparation comes in. So imagine you meet a person for the first time. What do you say to each other? Hello, how are you? What's your name? Where are you from? What are your hobbies? If you prepare these questions and answers ahead of time, you then have things to ask and say. So how do you do this? 
If you're learning on the website, check out our top 25 questions lessons that teach you questions and answers that we use all the time in conversations. For example, what's your name? Where are you from? How old are you? How was your weekend? Another way to prepare is to make a list of questions or phrases you want to say. Then, get the translations for those. The point is, if you prepare lines like, my name is, I am from, this weekend I did this, the kind of lines you use all the time, you'll always have something to say. Habit number five, get into the habit of producing output. So input is taking language in, listening and reading, and output is putting language out, so speaking and writing. The point here is, it's easy to just sit and listen and watch YouTube videos. You can listen to lessons all day long, but listening helps with listening. It won't get you speaking the language. So the easiest ways to produce output are, for speaking, repeat what you hear out loud. That's called shadowing. And for writing, write things out by hand. You can copy out our lesson dialogues or just copy the sentences out of a textbook. Habit number six, come back and review. And that's because reading something once doesn't mean it'll be in your brain forever. So this is where reviewing comes in. In order to master grammar, words, or phrases, you must go back and review. How do you do this? Spaced repetition flashcards are a great example of this. A lot of language learners use these because with spaced repetition, you get to see words again and again over spaced periods of time, and that improves your memory. Another simple thing you can do is download and save our lessons. Replay them later. Download our dialogue tracks. These give you just the conversation from that lesson, no translations. Make a playlist on your phone and listen as much as possible, just like with songs. Soon, you'll know tons of practical conversations by heart. Next, habit number seven, look for solutions. There's one interesting thing that separates new learners from successful learners. It's how they react when they don't understand something. Because beginners completely rely on the study tools they use, they tend to blame them too. You'll often hear that someone gave up because the textbook was too boring, or it won't help them speak. But if you realize a book won't help you speak, it's not the book's fault, is it? And if you complain that a class doesn't help you speak, but you're not raising your hand at every opportunity either, whose fault is it? So experienced learners look for solutions. Get into the habit of coming up with a solution for your problem. Habit number eight, focus on what you're good at. And you should do this because it's overall motivation. If you're generally better at speaking than writing, then you're more likely to enjoy it, which means you're more likely to continue with it. And that means it's a successful routine. Habit number nine is don't procrastinate, which is easier said than done. Most of us procrastinate. And a lot of that is a result of overthinking. Let's say you plan on studying today. So you remember, ah, I have to study, I have to study. Now you're ruining it in your head. It becomes something you have to do. It's a hassle now. But if you set a small, measurable goal and have a simple routine, spend five minutes, then you know you just need to put in five minutes and you're done. So if you want to beat procrastination, make your goals and routines easy. And number 10, remember that learning a language is a marathon, not a sprint. So there's no need to do five hour cram sessions and burn yourself out. Five or 10 minutes is good enough. Remembering this is a good habit to have. If you're having a bad day, if you can't remember some grammar, it's not all over. It's just a minor bump in the road. Another thing that helps is considering the resources you use. Sticking with quick five minute lessons that are easy to finish will help keep you in the marathon. Now, speaking of lessons and resources, here are this month's new lessons and resources. First, the Ultimate Guide to Learning and Mastering Language eBook. This is a 52-page eBook that covers the learning tactics I just talked about, setting goals, staying motivated, learning faster. If you're interested in learning strategies, be sure to download it. Next, the Sport and Exercise Conversation Cheat Sheet. If you wanna talk about sports and fitness in the language you're learning, then you'll love this PDF cheat sheet. And finally, how to improve your speaking skills. It's another language strategy lesson. To get these free lessons and resources, just click the link in the description below. All right, because this is the very first episode of the monthly review, we're asking you, yes you, to submit a video of yourself speaking the language. Here's the challenge for you. Yes, everyone watching this. 
Record a 30 second to one minute audio or video clip. Introduce yourself in the language. Share your name, where you're from, and why you're studying this language. And you'll win a three month Premium Plus subscription. To submit, click on the link in the description. Sign up for your free lifetime account. Then fill out the form, attach the audio or video file, and press submit. We may feature you in next month's episode, so a lot of learners will see you and your progress and will hopefully get inspired to improve and master the language. To submit a recording, click the link in the description and follow the instructions on the page. So thank you for watching this episode of Monthly Review. Next time, we'll talk about why your worst days are the best days to study. In the meantime, submit your recording if you're brave. Like and share this video and leave a comment to tell us what language learning tactics you'd like us to talk about. See you next time. Bye. To master a new language and understand everything as soon as you hear it, to read with just a quick glance and speak smoothly without thinking, you need to review. Here are our top five review tactics. Number one, listen to examples over and over again. By listening closely and often, you start to pick up the rhythm of a language, as well as correct pronunciation from a native speaker. Use our line-by-line -line feature that lets you both listen and read along. Use this tool to practice as much as possible. Number two, use our voice recording tool to master perfect pronunciation. Record yourself and compare it against the native speaker. If you sound different, then repeat after the native speaker until you're able to match them. Use our voice recording feature, which makes recording super easy. Number three, master your recorded conversations. Record conversations and go over them again and again. Master entire conversations and repeat them line by line. Use any of the dialogues available for download on our website. These come with transcripts of the entire conversation. Number four, use mobile devices to reinforce previously learned conversations. Constant review is the best way to progress in your language studies. Download the recorded dialogue to your mobile device and incorporate it into your music playlist. Quick reviews throughout the day effectively reinforce what you've learned. Number five, read with line-by-line -line notes. Read along with a native speaker to really master pronunciation and natural intonation. You should start slow at first, then slowly increase your speed. Your pronunciation will become more natural. You will also see that your ability to understand fluent speakers will greatly increase. You'll be able to improve your communication skills using these five simple review techniques. Increase your understanding of your target language. And remember, if you're interested in getting all these review tools, Sign up for your free lifetime account. No credit card required, and you'll get the best free online resources. Hi everyone, welcome to the Ultimate Portuguese Pronunciation Guide. In this lesson, you'll learn all 13 Portuguese vowel sounds. A, A, an, E, P, N, I, in, o, o, on, u, un. By learning all of these sounds, you'll be able to pronounce any vowel that could possibly appear in Portuguese. Are you ready? Then let's get started. The first vowel is a, la, alface, amor. This vowel sound is very similar to the a in father. This vowel sound is considered an open A sound because the jaw is low and the mouth is wide and open. Listen to how Jade pronounces this vowel. A, A. A, A. The next vowel is. Manhã, cama. Banana. This vowel sound is similar to the previous sound, except that it's the closed variant of the A sound. Compared to the previous sound, the jaw isn't opened as wide. It kind of sounds like the U in but. 
However, try to relieve the pressure from the back of the mouth slightly by moving the tongue forward a little. Pronouncing this sound quickly can also help with the pronunciation of this sound. Ah. 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 The next vowel is un. Ângulo. Lan. São Paulo. This is identical to the previous vowel sound, except there's nasalization. Nasalization means to pronounce it through the nose. Touch the tip of your tongue to the roof of your mouth and follow the groove to the back of the mouth. Could you feel the bone at the roof of your mouth? As you move further to the back of the roof of the mouth, there is a fleshy section that doesn't contain bone. This soft tissue that hangs at the back of the roof of the mouth is called the velum. The velum is raised when pronouncing oral sounds. To produce nasality, lower the velum to allow air to travel freely into the nasal cavity and out through the nose. Listen to Jade pronounce this nasal vowel. Ung, 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 ung. The next vowel is e. Serra, meta, café. This vowel sound is identical to the E in set. It's known as the open E sound in Portuguese. É, 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 é. The next vowel is E. Ser, medo. It's similar to the E in the word ne. However, try not to carry over the I sound too much. This is known as the closed E sound in Portuguese. E. 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 The next vowel is E. Centro, sempre, essência. This is identical to the previous sound, but with nasalization. Remember, you want to pronounce it through your nose. Ang, 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 ang. The next vowel is e, sinal, dia, país. This is identical to the I in the word ski. The vowel I doesn't have any open or closed variants. E, 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 E. e. The next vowel is in, sinto, sim, impar. This is identical to the previous sound, but with nasalization. In, 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 in. The next vowel is o, avó, famosa, óculos. This is identical to the o in the word hot. This sound is known as the open O sound in Portuguese. O, 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 O. The next vowel is O, avô, oliveira, ovo. This is similar to the previous sound, except that it's the closed version. This means that the mouth and tongue are positioned a little bit higher. It's quite similar to the O sound in the word coal. Listen to Jade. O, 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 O. The next vowel is on. Conto, vontade, bom. This is identical to the previous sound, but with nasalization. On, 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 on. 
the next vowel is U Rua Saúde Maduro This is identical to the U in the word rule. There are no open or closed variants for the U sound in Portuguese. U U U U the last vowel sound for this lesson is um, fungo, algum, cumplice. This is identical to the previous sound, but with nasalization. Um, 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 um. Well done! You've just learned all 13 vowel sounds in Portuguese. With these sounds, you can pronounce any vowel that could possibly appear in the Portuguese language. Isn't that great? E aí, gente, joinha? How are you? I'm Paloma. Eu sou a Paloma. Welcome to another Top Portuguese Words. Today's topic is Top 10 Most Common Tourist Vocabulary. Are you ready for traveling? Você está pronto para viajar? Let's do it! Passagem Ticket Passagem, ticket. Precisamos comprar as passagens de ônibus para a viagem. We need to buy the bus tickets for the trip. Precisamos comprar as passagens de ônibus para a viagem. Passagens usually referring to a bus or a train ticket. And if you're talking about an entrance ticket, we say entrada. Turista, tourist, turista, tourist, turista. Essa praia é a preferida dos turistas. This beach is tourist's favorite one. Although turista ends in A, you can use it both for male and female. O turista and a turista. Guia de viagem, guidebook, guia de viagem, guidebook. É melhor comprar um guia de viagem para escolher os lugares que você quer visitar. It's better to buy a guidebook to choose the places you want to visit. É melhor comprar um guia de viagem para escolher os lugares que você quer visitar. If you don't want to buy a guidebook, you can also search on the internet and find the places you want to go visit. But it's always good to have it written down, so in case you get lost, you can just ask someone and you have it written so the person can also read it in case they need. Templo Temple Templo Temple Este templo é belíssimo. This temple is beautiful. Don't confuse templo with tempo. Templo is temple and tempo is weather or time. Temos tempo para ir no templo? Do we have time to go to the temple? Mesquita Mosque Mesquita Mosque Mesquita Hoje vamos visitar a Mesquita do Brás. Quer ir com a gente? Today we are going to visit Brás Mosque. Would you like to come with us? We don't have many mosques in Brazil, but yes, we have a few if you want to visit. And also Mesquita is a common surname in Brazil. Igreja, church. Igreja, church. Escolhi um roteiro para conhecermos as igrejas de Ouro Preto. I chose a tour for us to visit Ouro Preto's churches. Ouro Preto is a city in Minas Gerais state and it's very famous for its colonial churches and historical buildings. Also, it's very nice to go there during carnival season. Cachoeira, waterfall. Cachoeira, waterfall. É uma delícia tomar banho de cachoeira. Você tem que ir com a gente. It's delightful to take a natural shower at the waterfall. You have to come with us. I think you can find waterfalls almost everywhere in Brazil. In São Paulo state we have a lot of waterfalls, also minas, yeah, so many states. <laughs> and it's very common to tomar banho de cachoeira. That means to shower at the waterfall, but actually means to swim at the waterfall. Excursão 
Tour. Excursão. Tour. Você também vai na excursão para Paraty? Are you going to the tour to Paraty too? Você também vai na excursão para Paraty? Excursão can be a sightseeing tour and it can also be a school tour. You know, uma excursão para o museu, a tour to the museum while you're at school. And Paraty is a very nice city in Rio State that is very worth visiting. Guia, guide, guia, guia. Já sei falar bem português. Não vou precisar de guia quando visitar o Brasil. I already speak Portuguese well. I won't need a guide when I visit Brazil. That would be so awesome if you're able to say that. But if you don't, don't worry. You can just say, Eu preciso de um guia em inglês. I need an English guide. Ônibus turístico. Tour bus. Ônibus turístico. Tour bus. Ônibus turístico. Vamos fazer um passeio com este ônibus turístico? Ele já tem um percurso planejado e vamos visitar vários lugares legais. Shall we take this tour bus? They already have a planned route and we'll visit many nice places. Some cities like Curitiba have also the city tour bus that you can use to visit the most special places in the city. For example, if you go to Curitiba, you can't miss Opera de Arame and Jardim Botânico, besides many other nice parks they have in there. Acabou! The end! Thanks a lot for watching and let us know in the comments the words you already know in Portuguese for traveling and the words you don't know and want to learn. Até a próxima! Tchau, tchau! Hey everyone! Welcome to your monthly review, the monthly show on language learning, where you discover new learning strategies, motivational tips, new study tools, resources, and where we show off learners like you speaking the language. That is, if you're brave enough to participate and become language learning famous. All the materials mentioned in this video are available for you right now on our website. Click the link in the description to sign up for your free lifetime account and start speaking in minutes. Okay, today's topic is why your worst days are the best days to study. So, have you ever had a day where you planned on learning language and you just couldn't go through with it? Even if learning a new language is your personal goal, something that you really want? Well, today you're going to learn one, why these bad days happen, and two, why you'll get your best work done on your worst days. Let's start. Why bad days happen with language learning. When I say bad days, I don't mean when you're too busy or when life gets in the way. These things are unavoidable. I mean days when you're just not in the mood. It's a perfectly good day. The sun is shining. No bad news. But you just can't get yourself to study. You're just wasting the day. So, here's why they happen. First, it's the law of diminishing returns in action. What does this mean? Think of it as eating pizza every day for five days a week. On the first day, the first two slices are great, but by the third one, you're feeling queasy. It's not as good. And by the fifth day, you're sick of pizza. That's the law of diminishing returns, when the benefits start decreasing over time. And it happens with language learning. When you first start, you learn a lot of phrases and it feels good. You're excited, but as time goes on, you don't feel like you're learning much, and this affects your mood and motivation, so you're not as excited to learn anymore, so you start having bad days. Second, bad days happen because you overthink things and ruin it for yourself. It's like dreading going to the gym. Let's say you went yesterday. You have to go again today. So you're dreading it all day long. Ah, I gotta go again. You set yourself up for a bad mood and a bad day. Third, bad days are a natural part of the cycle. Some days will be good. Most days you'll feel indifferent. Some days will be bad. But that's completely natural, and anyone with long-term projects and goals feels the same. And fourth, you can't be on 100% of the time. So just like days can't always be good, you too can't always be on and ready to go all the time. Again, just a realistic and expected part of the journey. Now, let's jump into the second part why you'll get your best work done on your worst days. So, why will you get your best work done? First, it's not that bad once you start. Once you've spent 10 or 15 minutes learning a language, it's not so bad. People say the same thing about the gym. If you show up and put in a bit of time, it gets easier. 
Second, it's overcoming a mental barrier. What I mean is, when most of us have bad days, our brain automatically says, okay, can't be done today, stop, we're done. But if you just work through it, you don't take these bad days so seriously anymore. And that means you're more likely to stick with your language learning goal. This brings us to the next point. Third, it's your best work because working on a bad day only strengthens your habit of language learning. Remember, habits are what will help you master a language over time. If you can stick to a habit on a bad day, your habit only gets stronger and it will lead you to fluency. And finally, fourth, it just feels good to overcome something. Imagine you have a bad day, but you still put in 10 minutes of language learning. It's a real sense of achievement. And it doesn't matter if you do a 10 minute lesson or a five minute lesson. The fact that you made some progress on a bad day will give you the motivation you need to keep going. Now, speaking of lessons, Here are this month's new lessons and resources. First, the best of 2018 language learning cheat sheets. If you want to get access to all of our conversation cheat sheets that we sent out this year, here's your chance. Download this PDF bundle right now. Next, the brand new supermarket cheat sheet. With this cheat sheet, you'll learn must know shopping phrases and vocab for meats, vegetables, and all products that you'll find in a supermarket. And finally, the most common adjectives. If you're a beginner and don't yet know these adjectives, then this is a perfect chance to boost your vocabulary. This one minute lesson will get them stuck in your head, guaranteed. To get these free lessons and resources, just click the link in the description below. All right, everyone. Now we're asking you to submit a video or audio file of yourself speaking the language. If you do, you'll win three free months of access to our learning program, which includes your very own teacher. Here's the challenge for you. Yes, everyone watching this. Record a 30 second to one minute video or audio clip. Introduce yourself in the language. Share your name, where you're from, and why you're studying this language. And you'll win a three month premium plus subscription. To submit, click on the link in the description. Sign up for your free lifetime account. Then fill out the form attach the audio or video file, and press submit. We may feature you in next month's episode, so a lot of learners will see you and your progress, and will hopefully get inspired to improve and master the language. To submit a recording, click the link in the description and follow the instructions on the page. So thank you for watching this episode of Monthly Review. Today we're going to talk about four techniques to help you stop translating in your head, and instead start thinking in your target language. This will allow you to have conversations with ease, read smoothly, and better understand native speakers. These are four methods to help you think in a new language. Number one, surround yourself with your target language. This way, you'll be completely immersed in the language. Without realizing it, you'll learn pronunciation, sentence structures, grammar, and new vocabulary. Play music in the background while you're cooking, or have a radio station on while you study. Just use one of our endless podcasts available to you. These are easy to listen to in the background while doing other things. Number two, learn through observation. This is how we all learned our native languages as kids. Words will develop their own meanings that relate better to your target language, rather than meanings that are translated directly. Number three, speak out loud to yourself. Even if you're a little embarrassed, it forces you to listen to how you speak. It makes it much easier to spot simple grammar mistakes. Number four, practice daily. If you practice everything for only one day, you won't retain the information you learned. The brain can realistically only focus for about 30 minutes. So studying a little every day allows you to absorb better. Follow these steps and have patience. You'll soon be able to achieve your language learning goals. Just make sure to remember these four methods. Sign up for your free lifetime account, no credit card required, and you'll get the best free online resources. Want to speed up your language learning? Take your very first lesson with us. You'll start speaking in minutes and master real conversations. Sign up for your free lifetime account. Just click the link in the description.